Welcome to City View. I'm your host, Leslie Sopko. In this episode, we'll show you a cool way to spend your next few Saturday nights. And the mayor personally responds to a request from one of Austin's youngest activists. But first, city manager Mark Ott has named Austin Energy's next general manager. He recently announced the appointment of Larry Weiss, who since 2000 has been general manager for the Turlock Irrigation District in California. During that time, Mr. Weiss has increased renewable energy at Turlock to 28 percent. Before making his final decision, the city manager and a group of community members traveled to California to interact with the community Weiss has been serving. We've learned uh, in California uh, that Larry Weiss is someone who clearly has the heart, passion, and intellect to honor and foster the innovative spirit that has come to define Austin Energy. Larry Weiss comes to Austin with almost 30 years of electric power and water utility experience. His immediate priorities for Austin Energy, he says, will be to address the utility's prospective $46 million budget deficit for the coming budget year, an upcoming rate case, and implementation of a new generation plan. He assumes his new duties at Austin Energy on September 27th. Conservation is a buzzword at Austin Energy and the Austin Water Utility. Both city departments have active campaigns to reduce energy consumption and lower water use in our community. Austin Mayor Lee Leffingwell recently joined the Austin Water Utility to urge Austinites to take the 3C challenge to reduce daily water usage by 10 percent. Commit, calculate, and conserve. Public education and public participation will be a vitally important part of our future conservation efforts. So today, I'm calling upon all citizens of Austin to take this 3C pledge to commit, to calculate, and to conserve, and to work together to help conserve and protect our water now and into the future. To help with this effort, Austin Water has launched a new online water use calculator to help residents track their daily usage. To get started, visit ci.austin.tx.us backslash watercon and answer some basic questions about how water is used in your home. And now it's time for a city council update from Larry Schooler. The Austin Police Department and public safety agencies got a boost from the city council at their last meeting. Council agreed to apply for federal grant funding for an electronic ticketing project. The money would allow the city to issue paperless tickets using Bluetooth technology, saving officers lots of time by filling in some of the information automatically and eliminating problems with illegible handwriting. Council also decided to join the County Information Resources Agency. The agency helps members share information resources and technologies. In a related move, Council decided to buy software, allowing the Austin Regional Intelligence Center to accept criminal justice files from partner agencies in Hayes, Travis, and Williamson counties. Trees also got a boost when council members approved a contract that will help protect trees that might otherwise be damaged by construction on the Waller Creek project. That project will include a tunnel diverting flows from Waller Creek and allowing for more development in the area. Council directed the city clerk to prepare for a charter amendment election within the next couple of years. Voters would consider whether the city council would appoint the city attorney. As of now, the city manager makes that appointment. A vote of three-fourths of the council would allow the council to remove the city attorney if the charter amendment passed. Finally, council wants to know what it costs to process plastic bags in the waste stream. Council has been reviewing options for plastic bags for several years and collaborated with local retailers on a plan to reduce plastic bag use by buy reusable bags, and recycle plastic bags. In all, Council considered 152 items at its June 24th meeting. Its next regularly scheduled meeting is July 29th. For City View, I'm Larry Schooler. Kiplinger's Personal Finance magazine recently named Austin the number one best city for the next decade. In recognizing Austin, Kiplinger's highlighted Meet the Lender, a city-run business loan fair, as a key example of the resources available for small businesses and startups. Seventh Annual Meet the Lender is an opportunity for our local business community to meet local bankers, 
community lenders and also other investors looking to lend to the business community. In, our, in the economy the way it is right now, our lenders are still looking to lend to the small business community. Every lender that will attend the event is willing and is eager to visit with every small business in our community. There is no cost to attend and there's also free parking and in addition we will be offering two classes, our Biz Aid orientation class which provides uh, the individual that attends the class information about all resources available to them uh, from the Small Business Development Program and also a Biz Open class which will outline our City of Austin's permitting and development process. Existing and aspiring entrepreneurs, they will have the opportunity to meet the lenders, to go from booth to booth and share with them their business ideas and also form critical relationships that they will need in their future. The seventh annual Meet the Lender will be held Thursday, August 5th from 3 to 7 p.m. For more information or to register for the event, call 974-7800 or visit austinsmallbiz.org. And beginning October 1st, all Time Warner Cable customers will need digital equipment to view City of Austin Channel 6 and other public, educational, and government access channels. Time Warner recently moved the deadline from August 5th to give customers more time to prepare. Although these channels will remain part of Time Warner's basic tier service, they will only be available in digital format. To get details on how to make the transition, or on how to get a free standard definition digital set-top box, call Time Warner Cable at 512-485-6000. If you already have digital cable, this change does not affect you. Well, Austin City Hall is a place where all voices can be heard, and it doesn't matter how young you are. Find out how one child's letter convinced the mayor to organize a DVD donation drive for the Austin Public Library. Well, we're looking for children's DVDs, uh, the, the ones that are the most popular that we just can't seem to keep on the shelves. Back in May, I had a group of elementary students touring City Hall and they usually stop by my office and say hello and I get to uh, meet them and say a few words to them. As a result of that meeting, I got a, a handwritten letter from one of the young students. I'm, I'm going to read it for you because it's very short. What can I do to get Austin's library some more kids DVDs? And that's signed, your citizen, Samuel. So uh, we responded to his letter. We wrote him a letter back and we told him that is a great idea, Samuel. So we're going to call upon all the citizens of Austin to donate DVDs to the Austin Public Library so that they can be put out there in the branches and our kids can use them. Eliza has donated Mighty Mouse, Dora the Explorer, which is a fairy tale adventure. Finally, we have volume one of Walt Disney's Timeless Tales, The Prince and the Pauper, Three Little Pigs, The Tortoise and the Hare, and more. They're too young for me, so um, I thought it would be nice to give them to somebody who wanted them. I like it this. Usually if you come here first, you, know, you get first grabs, but we got here a little late, and uh, yeah, as you can see, when you get here a little late, it's, uh, it's kind of slim pickings. But we tried to find her something that she, she enjoys instead of giving it away to someone else. You can kind of just share it with everybody. To get a response from the mayor and to have the mayor, you know, run with it, and, and create this really innovative program where, where you know, we're encouraging people to donate DVDs. I would um, tell them if they would want them. And if they did, I would give them to them. And if they didn't, I would just ask some other kids. Parents, when their kids get a little older, they don't want to watch those DVDs anymore, the, you know, the Dora or the whatever that they were into when they were younger. So those DVDs may just be sitting on a shelf somewhere. So if we can get people to bring them into the library. Oh, and go to camp. And other children can, can share them. And um, it, it's just really a wonderful thing. If you have any new or gently used DVDs that you'd like to donate, you can drop them off at any library location in Austin. If you need some ideas on what to donate, visit the Austin Public Library website for a wish list that covers all age groups. The lives of some of Austin's most influential musicians and promoters were recently celebrated during an induction ceremony into the Austin Music Memorial at the Long Center for the Performing Arts. We were there for the celebration. 
bagpipes pierced the ears of local musicians and families during the Austin Musician Memorial that featured 10 talented musicians that helped contribute to Austin's music. Well-known artists consisted of Clifford Antone, the owner of the legendary Antone's Blues Club, responsible for launching the careers of many local blues and rock legends. Singer-songwriter that helped shape the reputation of Austin's country music scene, Towns Van Zandt. His songwriting remains internationally revered and his songs have been performed by many music greats. Once a gas station owner, Kenneth Threadgill turned his station into a tavern, which eventually became a hot spot for local musicians. There's so much talent this year. This could easily be spread out over two years. One of the first female superstars of rock and roll, Janis Joplin. The title of the story was, She Dares to be Different. While performing at local venues, such as Threadgill's, she cultivated her signature bluesy, gravel voice sound. Local legend Stevie Ray Vaughan achieved great success as a virtuoso blues guitarist in the 1980s. He also served as a musical ambassador for Austin, bringing worldwide attention to the city's diverse music scene. Well, I thought it was great. The band was great, a group of amazingly talented musicians, and I thought it was a wonderful group of people to be grouped in with, to be honored. It was a really nice presentation, and we appreciate it. Other musicians inducted were Martin Banks, Irby Bowser, Lalo Campos, Louis Guerrero, and Johnny Holmes. And finally, the City of Austin is ready to help you with your Saturday night plans. Join us for a Deep Eddy Pool Splash Party movie night with family and friends. We're here for the Deep Eddy Splash Movie Night. We put this on every Saturday uh, from mid-June through mid-August. The movies begin at dusk. They're family-oriented movies. Uh, upcoming movies include Star Trek and Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. We have options of being both in the water as well as being on the, the grass and watching the movie with your family. We've been doing this event since the mid-90s. In the 2009 summer, we were averaging seven, 800 people per event uh, with the popular movie um, having up to 1,300. We encourage everyone, families, couples. The mission fee is just the standard pool fee. The movie's free. You know what I mean. You're welcome to come out. It's great for everybody. It's a great community event. Deep Betty Pool will be showing family-friendly movies on Saturday nights through August 14th. Movies start at dusk, which is usually around 9 p.m. Your pool entrance fee also covers the movie. And that's all for this edition of City View. I'm your host, Leslie Sompko. Our next episode premieres Friday, August 10th. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>